The prepuce, or foreskin, its anatomy and physiology. What is the function of the prepuce, or foreskin? Medical dictionaries define the prepuce as the free fold of skin that covers more or less completely the glands, the glands being the head of the penis. Also, the similar fold over the glands of the clitoris. Apart from this description, American medical textbooks provide little or no information about the nature or function of the prepuce, and in fact rarely include the prepuce in diagrams of the penis. Drawing from primary research published in medical journals from Europe and North America, this presentation explains the anatomy and physiology of the prepuce, an organ that has been present in all mammals for an estimated 65 million years. The skin that covers the penis is unique. It is not attached to underlying structures and can be twisted 180 degrees. This tubular mobile skin covers the penile shaft, rides up and over the corona glandis, or crown of the glands. At a point near the end of the glands, the skin doubles under itself and transitions into the mucosa of the inner prepuce. This transitional zone is referred to as a mucocutaneous junction. Other examples of these junctional regions in human anatomy would include the lips as they transition into the deep red mucosa of the mouth, or perhaps more analogous to the prepuce, the eyelids, where we find the skin of the outer eyelid transitioning into the brightly colored mucosa of the inner eyelid. So it is with the prepuce, the outer cutaneous prepuce, and the inner mucosal prepuce. The mucosa of the inner prepuce is divided into two distinct zones, the ridged mucosa, 10 or 12 ridges whose collective width is about 10 to 15 millimeters or one half inch, and the smooth mucosa, which comprises the remainder of the inner prepuce. The smooth mucosa is attached to the body of the penis at the coronal sulcus, the groove behind the corona glandus. As we move from hairy skin to hairless skin, to mucosa, or mucous membrane, we see the network of nerves and blood vessels rising closer to the surface of the skin, providing the mucosal areas of our body with more acute sensation. When the penis becomes erect, the prepuce everts, that is, it turns inside out, unfolding onto the shaft of the penis. The ridged mucosa at the mucocutaneous junction now lies in an oblique circumferential position on the penile shaft. One of the hallmarks of the mucocutaneous junction is an increase in the quantity and specialization of nerve endings found in these regions. We know from modern research that this is especially so with the mucocutaneous junction of the prepuce. In this stylized cross-section, the ridges of the inner prepuce and the frenulum, a bridge-like structure that connects the prepuce to the underside of the penis, are highlighted in red to indicate large numbers of blood vessels and high concentrations of specialized nerve endings. Before we discuss the quantity and types of nerve endings found in these regions and how these parts of the penis function during sexual intercourse, let's take a look at how the prepuce evolves from its development in utero through childhood and adolescence. This is a diagrammatic representation of male and female genitalia at eight weeks gestation. The genitals are female in appearance. The genital tubercle will become the glands of the clitoris in the female and the glands of the penis in the male. The labial scrotal swellings will become the labia majora in the female and the scrotum in the male. The urogenital folds will fuse in the male, creating the penile raphe or seam on the underside of the penis and will remain open in the female as the vaginal orifice. The prepuce of the male and female will develop in succeeding months to cover the glands of the penis and the glands of the clitoris. If the embryo is male, around eight weeks gestation, under the influence of male hormones, a phallus will begin to grow. Here is the advancing phallus of the male. These are millimeter marks. The fetus at this time is 25 millimeters, or about one inch long. Here we see the fusion of the urogenital folds occurring around 12 weeks, creating the penile raphe. At about this same time, the prepuce begins its development as a fold of tissue originating at the coronal sulcus. The fold everts, 
the outside becoming the inside as it grows forward over the glands. Shared epidermal cells of the glands and the advancing prepuce firmly attaches the prepuce to the glands. The complete enfolding of the glands is accomplished by the 24th week. The fusion of the prepuce on the underside of the penis creates the frenulum. When this enfolding process is complete, the highly vascularized prepuce can be seen in this cross-section completely covering the glands. Here we see one of the corpora cavernosa, the bodies that fill with blood to create an erection, and the urethra through which urine and semen will pass. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, the penis at birth is delicate and easily irritated by urine and feces. The foreskin shields the glands. Without this protection, the glands, and especially the urinary opening, may become irritated or infected. In this close-up, we can see the glands of the penis, the prepuce, and this common membrane which binds the prepuce to the glands. Babies are born, male and female, with the prepuce firmly attached to the glands, much like the eyelids of newborn kittens which are fused shut at birth. The separation of the prepuce from the glands in both the male and the female is gradual and variable from individual to individual. Whirls of cells form in this membrane and die from the inside out, creating liquid-filled pearls. Over time, these pearls coalesce to form the prepucial space, the space between the prepuce and the glands. The American Academy of Pediatrics advises that no attempt should be made to forcibly retract the foreskin, that early retraction can cause pain, bleeding, and possibly adhesions. Separation will evolve over time. Although many foreskins will retract by age five, there is no need for concern even after a longer time. Some boys do not attain full retractability of the foreskin until adolescence. This is autopsy material, so no one is getting hurt here. The pathologist has retracted the prepuce. We can see the ridged band, the smooth mucosa, the frenulum, and some of the prepuce still partially attached to the glands. Here, the pathologist has retracted the prepuce even more. If he were to let go, it would spring forward to cover the glands. This ability of the prepuce to spontaneously recover the glands is caused by the restraint of the frenulum and a muscle sheath known as the dardos fascia. The dardos fascia lies one to two millimeters under the penile skin. The muscle fibers of the dardos fascia form a mosaic pattern in the penile shaft skin and outer prepuce. This muscle sheath terminates at the mucocutaneous junction in a circular sphincter-like configuration. This closing mechanism, beyond the urinary opening, has been referred to as the prepucial ring. It functions as a one-way valve, allowing for the passage of urine while guarding against the entrance of foreign pathogens into the prepucial space. The tightness of the prepucial ring is extremely variable from individual to individual and is dependent on age and the degree to which the dardos muscle is contracted. Here, we see what appears on the left to be a tight prepucial opening in a young boy. Yet minutes later, as the dardos muscle relaxes, the urinary opening becomes exposed. As with other smooth muscle tissue, the dardos fascia contracts slowly but can remain contracted for long periods of time. This muscle sheath is continuous with the dardos fascia of the scrotum and in the presence of cold contracts and draws the genitals closer to the body. An infant often has a prepuce that extends well beyond the urinary opening. In the past, this naturally occurring condition was diagnosed as redundant foreskin, and physicians recommended surgery to remove the skin beyond the tip of the glands. We now know that as the penis grows, especially under the influence of male hormones in adolescence, the abundant prepuce of the infant may, at maturity, fail to completely cover the glands. With the natural separation of the prepuce from the glands complete, let's go through the retraction process, following the movement of the colored lines demarcating the coronal sulcus and the mucocutaneous junction. As the prepuce unfolds, 
we can see the ridged band, the smooth mucosa, and with further tension, the mucocutaneous junction now lies at the base of the penis. So the inner prepuce alone is capable of covering the shaft of the penis. Here we see the frenulum, the bridge on the underside of the prepuce. Like the lingual frenulum, which connects the tongue to the floor of the mouth, frenula tether movable structures to non-movable structures. Here are the two frenula of the female. We see the glands of the clitoris, the prepuce, and the frenula that are continuous with the labia minora. The frenulum of the male is continuous with the ridged band and exerts increasing tension as the band moves proximately or toward the body. Here we see the frenulum with the ridged band radiating from it. Here is a cross-section of the ridged band, 10 or 12 ridges about one millimeter apart. In this transilluminated section, we see the dense concentration of blood vessels in the ridged band, which gives rise to this typical vascular blush. There are different types of nerve endings in the body. There are pachinian corpuscles which lie deeper in the dermis. These are onion-shaped end organs that are sensitive to pressure. Other receptors called Ruffini corpuscles sense vibration. There are nerve endings that are very close to the surface of the skin, like the tactile corpuscles of Meisner, which are sensitive to light touch. And there are free nerve endings, smaller diameter nerve fibers that terminate at the surface of the skin without a corpuscle. These nerves are responsible for sensing pain. Meisner's corpuscles, the nerve endings sensitive to light touch, predominate the mucosa of the prepuce while the glands is predominated by free nerve endings that sense pain. Clusters of Meisner's corpuscles are found in the crests of the ridged band. Here is a cross-section of the highly vascularized corpuscles. Each of these red spots is a blood vessel. When we apply the appropriate stain, we see this typical pine cone shaped end organ. In this magnification, the ribbon-like arrangement of the Meisner's corpuscle can be seen coursing back and forth just under the skin. The slightest distortion of this end organ will generate sensation. To get an idea of the difference between skin that is highly invested with Meisner's corpuscles and skin which is not, stroke your fingernail across the back of your hand and compare that feeling to the sensation elicited by stroking the palm of the hand. That rather ticklish sensation is generated by the large numbers of Meisner's corpuscles found in the palm of the hand. Here is a transverse section of one of the ridges of the ridged band. Each of these black dots represents a Meisner's corpuscle. These corpuscles are found in large numbers in the ridges of the inner prepuce. They are not found in the sulci or valleys between the ridges. Meisner's corpuscles are found in abundance in the lips, the fingertips, the palms of the hand, the soles of the feet, and the ridged band of the inner prepuce. There are an estimated 20,000 of these nerve endings in the ridged band. So why are these large numbers of specialized nerve endings found in the crests of the ridges of the inner prepuce? Upon erection, the ridged band is deployed onto the shaft of the penis. During the inward motion of intercourse, the Meisner's corpuscles in the crests of the ridges are stimulated by contact with the vaginal wall and by the restraint of the frenulum. In the outward motion of intercourse, the ridged band comes in contact with the corona glandis and in some cases will enfold the glands. These nerve endings are stimulated again by this contact. This ability to turn inside out, then turn outside in, is unique in human physiology and plays an important role in sexual foreplay. During sexual intercourse, this unfolding and enfolding mechanism, this ability of the penis to glide in and out of itself, increases the pleasure dynamic for both partners. In the absence of the prepuce, a relatively static structure is created. The mushroom-shaped glands draws lubrication from the vagina with each outward motion of intercourse, increasing abrasion and loss of lubrication. 
In the history of medicine, certain parts of human anatomy have been deemed redundant or superfluous. The adenoids, mastoids, tonsils, appendix, and prepuce fell into this category. The appendix, as an example, by its very name considered an appendage to the body, is now known to be part of the immune system, producing large numbers of lymphocytes. It was not until researchers identified the functions of these organs that they were spared indiscriminate excision and given their due respect. The prepuce is a complex of specialized erogenous structures that work in sympathy with adjacent penile structures. The prepuce is not a redundant or superfluous part of human anatomy, but a large platform for the reception and expression of sensual and sexual sensations. The surgical removal of the prepuce has predictable and in some cases irreversible consequences. Circumcision is the surgical removal of the prepuce. The circumferential line of excision is usually near the coronal sulcus. The long-term consequences of circumcision are many. Circumcision externalizes the glands, an organ designed by nature to be internal. The exposed glands is unprotected from cold and frostbite. Circumcision diminishes the penis. Because the prepuce is a double fold of tissue, if the line of excision is at the coronal sulcus, we can see that circumcision would remove about half of the skin that covers the penis. Circumcision dries the penis out. In its natural state, the inner surface of the prepuce and the exterior surface of the glands are smooth, moist, and supple. Circumcision discolors the penis. In its natural state, the glands is a venous purple. The glands of the circumcised penis is rather dull and gray. Circumcision desensitizes the penis by removing large numbers of specialized nerve endings. Circumcision causes callousing of the glands. Layers of cells build up over the surface of the glands in response to the abrasive effects of an external environment progressively diminishing the sensibility of the glands. And finally, depending on the amount of tissue that is removed, circumcision can immobilize the external moving parts of the penis. The unfolding and enfolding physiology enjoyed by the intact male is diminished or absent in the circumcised male. The immediate consequences of circumcision are well documented in studies performed during the 1980s all of which concluded that babies undergoing circumcision feel pain, severe and persistent pain. Up until this time, doctors were taught, and many still believe, that infants are incapable of feeling pain. These studies prompted the American Medical Association to recommend analgesia for newborn circumcisions in 1988, stating that there is no doubt that circumcisions are painful for the baby. Unanesthetized newborns cry vigorously, tremble, and in some cases become mildly cyanotic because of prolonged crying. Even if current analgesic techniques are employed, complete pain relief for the infant cannot be guaranteed. Newborn circumcision causes an increased heart rate, an increase in palm or sweating, increased plasma cortisol levels, which are the stress indicators in the blood, a disruption of feeding cycles, decreased REM sleep, fluctuations of blood oxygen levels, disruption of sleep-wake cycles, diminished attentiveness, prolonged irritability, and a disruption of parent-infant bonding.